Statistics show that 80% of medical students will change their specialty of interest. Which means that you need to keep an open mind when you're in your third year and fourth year of medical school. That's the difficult thing about being a medical student is, I don't want to say uninformed decisions, it but... It is uninformed. However, one thing that we forget to think about, my um, life goals changed. What you're capable of doing now, and you don't necessarily look 30 years down the road. And what are the things that you give up by doing this specialty? Welcome back to our channel. Statistics show that 80% of medical students will change their specialty of interest by the time they actually go through the match. So that's most students. Which means that you need to keep an open mind when you're in your third year and fourth year of medical school. And you're actually starting your clinical rotations. That's when you really start to see, you know, what the specialties are like. Um, but as you also know, um, third year does not give you a complete picture of the breadth of medical specialties. You have your core rotations like family medicine, and internal medicine, surgery, um, ob guide, maybe neuro and psychiatry, but there are a ton of other fields that you should explore. Yeah. And hopefully you should try to do that in your first and second years. Yeah. I think that's a, very, that's a difficult thing about being a medical student is you know, your first and second year are your basic sciences, and so you're in the classroom. And then your third and fourth year are your clinical years, so that's when you're actually out and doing rotations. Um, and then you have your core clinical rotations, so like Patrick mentioned, things like internal medicine, surgery. But there are a number of specialties that you just never get exposed to if you don't actually seek them as an elective. Um, so a lot of the times, medical students end up making, I don't want to say uninformed decisions, it but, is uninformed, you know, decisions without having experienced the full uh, breadth of medical specialties that are available to them. I think that um, we were in a similar situation because yeah, yeah. uh, we actually both switched specialties from the specialties that we initially matched into when we um, did the match the first time. I was pretty much set on plastic surgery and I knew I came into med school knowing that I did everything I needed to do, whether it was taking a year off, everything to prepare for it. And I even matched into plastic surgery. Um, and honestly, I think it would have been a good fit for me if I just purely wanted to do plastic surgery. However, one thing that we forget to think about um, is how do we want to live our life? And actually, um, you got to know what type of person are you? Are you a person that lives to work or do you work to live? And what I mean by that is some people have to have fulfillment in their job in order for them to perform well outside of work. So those are the people who um, work to live. If you flip it, or, oh wait, no, that's the people who live to work. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a confusing kind of the Concept. wording, but yeah. yeah. You if you're that. like, your job is so important to you and that you, you really need to have satisfaction in your job, and I think most people want some sort of satisfaction, yeah. but if you are just all in, your job is your everything, then that's kind of, you. You live to work, I think yeah, that's what you're trying to, to get at. Exactly. And then there are other people who work to live, meaning that they need to feel satisfied in their regular life or their general life in order for them to come into work and perform their yeah. best. Or they have other interests outside of work and work isn't all, you know, that as important to them. They have other pursuits outside of their work um, mm -hmm. that are, you know, important. So although I came into plastic surgery because I was so in love with the field, at some point in that training, my um, life goals changed and I realized that I actually had interests outside of medicine that I'd like to pursue. So plastic surgery no longer was a good fit for me in that term. In, in that it's a surgical specialty and if you think about surgical specialties they take a huge chunk of your time. You're, you're, you're at work so much that you it's very hard to pursue things outside of work sometimes and you found that in surgery that that was the, the case, case even in residency and so. more so the fact that it's just unpredictable like mm -hmm. you, it's hard to um, make outside commitments if you're a surgeon that's not to say you shouldn't go into surgery but i will say that all my surgical chiefs had told me um, do not go into surgery unless you could not see yourself going into any other specialty mm -hmm. which was the case for me at the time but again other social issues came up and it changed how I pursued how I wanted to use my degree. Yeah, no, that's a really big point. I think that that's the thing. When we're in medical school and we're thinking about what specialties we want to pursue, sometimes you think about it in terms of where you are now 
and like what you're capable of doing now and you don't necessarily look 30 years down the road and think is this something that I could see myself doing you know when I have a family when I have you know other responsibilities other things that I want you know like it's, it's, it's important not to just look at the now but also to look 30 years down the road and see if that specialty is still going to be a good fit for you um, for me that was sort of a similar consideration so I initially uh, matched into obstetrics and gynecology and actually did a year of that residency before switching to radiology and um, you know before going into uh, obstetrics and gynecology I was you know gumbo I loved OB OB is still one of the most interesting fields uh, there is and I loved the work and I loved um, just the clinical work and all of the the procedures there's so much I loved about it um, but I found you know well into you know the first couple months into my first year of residency that I didn't think that that lifestyle was sustainable for me say 30 years down the road even though I loved it I just had to really take a hard look at myself and figure out what I wanted for myself and for me it wasn't that specialty so I started um, and that and that also kind of leads into what I mentioned earlier um, radiology was something that I wasn't really exposed to early in my medical training so it wasn't really until my fourth year of medical school uh, I did an elective in breast imaging because I thought, you know, that's going to be relevant to OB. And that was my first exposure to radiology or the clinical practice of radiology. And I actually found that it was a really good fit. <laughs> so, you know, fast forward to me being an intern in OB guide and really not being as satisfied with that choice. I started thinking about radiology and started exploring that and actually decided to apply for that. And that's how I ended up <laughs> switching specialties. So kind of the process of switching specialties is maybe a topic for another day and how to actually go about it if you find yourself in a similar situation. But um, I think you have to be open. You know, I think that it's one thing to make a decision about choosing a specialty and going into it. But then if you find that you're not happy, there are definitely avenues for you to switch and change. And we've both done it. So we can advise you in any ways that we can. Definitely, I agree with everything she said, you know. To be honest, once I had made that decision that, you know, plastic surgery wasn't right for me, I almost left medicine, you know. Yeah. I actually had to go back and go to that double AMC website and take one of these exams to assess what my interests were. And I, I answered those questions honestly, and anesthesiology popped up as like, it was like 50 points versus yeah. derm, which was like 10 points, and then emergency medicine. So that kind of led me towards looking into anesthesiology. Fortunately, my roommate in medical school um, was an anesthesiologist, so I picked his brain. Um, a lot of my um, mentors, you know, the, the med students who were ahead of me actually went into anesthesiology, so I got to pick their brains about it. And the more I explored it, the more I realized, hey, this could be a good fit for me, mm -hmm. especially because I still get to use my hands. I love physiology. I love, like, seeing an immediate, um, response to whatever I do, which is one of the things that um, I love about surgery. So a lot of these things that were still applicable to anesthesiology, but I, this was a specialty where it was more shift work, depending on where you go. It's not the same everywhere, but yeah. at least for me, I knew that I had more, a more predictable um, schedule, mm -hmm. which allowed me to now get involved with the activities that I wanted to do outside of medicine. Yeah. And they both talk to each other. So I, I, my, I love my job and it informs what I do outside of medicine. And then the things I do outside of mes medicine informs what I do in my job. So yeah. this was a great fit for me. Yeah. And I think that the, the sad part about medical training and being a medical student and even doing clinical rotations is that you're not really going to know what the specialty is like until you're actually in residency. Yeah. So as much as you try to make an informed decision, um, you don't really get the full breadth of, you know, that experience and that specialty until you're actually doing it. <laughs> and that's because, you know what, like, as a medical student, you're not the person necessarily making the decisions. You're not, yeah. But day one, as an intern, when you have that pager, <laughs> they're calling you. That's it, yeah. yeah. I still have PTSD Me from too. my uh, pager, oh my intern year. <laughs> Dude, I start off on trauma. My pager was blowing up every five to ten minutes. I will never forget that. Yeah, I don't, man. I have a pager, but I don't use it. <laughs> yeah. Get an OB intern is no joke. I still remember, you know, running through the halls to go uh, attend to a laboring patient in the parking lot. Like, you never know what was gonna happen yeah. they're unpredictable um, but you mentioned something about sort of your personality and, and choosing a specialty that matches your personality um, I think that for both of us we're in specialties that definitely oh, yeah. match our personalities uh, radiology is great for me as someone who's like naturally introverted I really like the reading room setting you're kind of 
you work with colleagues, you interact with colleagues, but your work is, is very much um, you and your work, right? You're reading a particular study, you're interpreting it, you're making your diagnosis. Um, so it's, it's definitely uh, introvert friendly. Um, you do have opportunities for consulting. I still see patients because as a breast imager, I often you know, do biopsies or consult with patients as well, as well as other uh, surgeons and other physicians. Um, but yeah, you have to kind of think about what would work with you, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, OB was, is great and I loved it, but as someone who's an introvert, um, kind of being on all the time and always in the middle of the action is very draining for me. So kind of stepping back and doing a specialty like radiology, I think um, is a really good fit for me. And for me, I guess, you know, I think anesthesiology is great for all kinds of personalities because, you know, when you're an anesthesiologist, you can be, you're kind of like in the background. So you can remain in the background even though you're doing life-saving work, or you can be a little bit more vocal. And I think um, I, I like the fact that there are times when I can be more um, vocal or I interact with my patients, I help them feel calm before going back to surgery. And then when I'm in the OR, like, I have that that peace and calm to myself. However, like if there's something going wrong, I speak up, you know. So it's uh, anesthesiology allows a variety of personalities to, um, I guess, fit in this specialty. And I think what I really love about this field is that, honestly, I feel like a physician. Like I feel like I am making life changing and life like really critical decisions to ensure that my patients are safe and that they don't die. Um, and I kind of was missing that in plastic surgery, and maybe it was because, you know, I was the first in my family to be a doctor, so I would get these questions about blood pressure and other things that I would forget. <laughs> but now, like, all those basic questions, or I shouldn't call them basic, but like, all these questions that most people tend to ask, like, I have a firm background in it. Like, yeah. I deal with Physiology, it every day. Physiology, you know, all of that stuff. And yeah. Honestly, I, when I tell all my med students and residents that I work with, um, when it comes to making a decision about how they want to live their life and what specialty to um, pick, I tell them to make a list of three things. You need to pick a pro, like you need to have your pros. So like if you choose a certain specialty, what are the benefits of doing this specialty? Then you need to write down your cons. So like what are the things that you give up by doing this specialty? And then the third column that people need to look at is other considerations. And that could be whether you have a family, mm -hmm. whether um, it's is there a particular location that you need to be in, whether it's to be whether you're gonna live in the rural setting versus yeah. a city setting, because those things change how you practice medicine. For sure. If you're yeah. a family medicine in the rural area, you're doing a lot of things. Yeah. I think a rural you family medicine delivering babies, yeah, and like that's doing awesome. dirt, you might be doing yeah, I mean you'll be doing a lot of things. However, yeah. like family medicine in the city, you're probably doing more like high blood pressure, diabetes management. So all these other considerations you need to think about. I want yeah. to make your decision. Really, really good points. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, let us know what you think of this video. If you have other questions about choosing a specialty, we're here to help. <laughs> so definitely comment below. As and always, I'll, go ahead. And I'll include that link to that um, AAMC survey um, yeah. below. Um, I think it's very important. As long as you answer those questions honestly, you'll get a good, um, uh, a good result, or at least an honest result for you. All right. Take care. Deuces. Thank you.